Well, good evening. This is the 6 p.m. press conference here on the CZU Lightning Complex. I'm Jonathan Cox, Deputy Chief with CAL FIRE with the San Mateo Santa Cruz Unit and Line Officer on the incident. Just uh, as always, if you could keep your cell phones muted and take any conversations outside the press conference area. Uh, additionally, there will be time for questions and answers at the end of the formal presentations. And as always, if you could please keep your masks on at all times. With that, just a quick incident update for the fire this evening at 6 p.m. We can confirm that we have uh, 83,133 acres uh, within the fire perimeter. The fire is now 27% contained. Uh, there are still 10,207 structures that are threatened by the incident, but that number is coming down every time we uh, report out. We can also confirm 831 structures that have been destroyed. Of the 831 structures, 575 of those are single family residents. And of the 831, only 11 are in San Mateo County. The rest are in Santa Cruz County. We have uh, over 2,000 personnel, additional personnel arrived today to uh, fight the fire. We are now at 2,105 personnel assigned to the incident. With that, I'll hand it over to Incident Management Team 3 Operations Section Chief Mark Brunton for an operations update. Good evening. Uh, another good uh, day of uh, work on the fire line. Uh, the weather again cooperating with us as far as our grand resources, able to get in and uh, start uh, putting in a lot of line and uh, picking up uh, any of the hot spots uh, throughout the fire. Uh, starting at the top of the fire, again, uh, the Botano Park area, uh, we do have our con uh, control lines in, continue to put more control lines in uh, to strengthen that line. Uh, fire continue to work, in, work down in, in towards those lines and when it does we're able to uh, pick up the fire and, uh, and start our extinguishment and then in other areas uh, d get into a mop-up phase uh, a part of that that part of the fire so uh, good progress there a lot is still a lot of work up in that end of the fire uh, with our winds that we've been seeing uh, today they've been blowing from a southerly direction so it's been blowing uh, smoke uh, not only into that community, into Pescadero, but also uh, reaching as far as uh, Half Moon Bay. Um, no threat uh, to those communities. Uh, maybe a little unnerving that they're smelling or, uh, that's, or seeing that smoke, but it's just because of our wind patterns bringing the smoke from the entire fire and pushing it to the north. Uh, the coming days, uh, as far as our weather forecast, it's going to be uh, hotter, drier, and we are going to see a reversal of the winds uh, in the opposite direction. Moving down on the coast, uh, was able to check on a lot of that part of the fire this afternoon. Um, it's looking really good. There are a number of uh, areas where the, the burn wasn't as clean, uh, burned through some of the eucalyptus groves and such. So a lot of smoke production. It's no factor as far as, uh, as the fire goes, other than it's going to be a, a heavy mop up uh, on that in that area. So eventually when Highway 1 is, is open up, um, there is going to be a, it's be very visible. Um, and we're going to be continually working on that. That's a lot of work. Uh, tedious and time-consuming work, but uh, it's it's going to be there for a while. So moving to the southern part of the fire, that's looking really good. Once again, uh, mopping up really well. Good, strong control lines. We're feeling feeling very confident on that. Again, around the community of Felton, uh, that burnout operation operation we did a couple days ago, uh, continue to consume deep into the uh, the burn itself, which is great. Uh, it's doing the work we wanted to do. It's put a nice uh, protective ring around uh, the community of Felton. Moving up the uh, Highway 9 uh, corridor, line is continually, uh, continuing to be put in, improved. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, because of the topography, because of the fuels, and because of the very thick um, duff layer on the forest floor, uh, it's taken a considerable amount of work to make sure we get a good, strong line in. Uh, throughout the fire today, uh, we've, we've seen a, a number of very small um, slopovers or where the fire has burned through the duff and popped up. On the other side of the line, our crews have been able to get in there and, and contain those, but I think this is just going to be uh, a regular occurrence uh, as we continue to strengthen the lines, and until we get those completely strengthened, we're going to see that happening probably day in, day out, especially as we get into that warmer and drier weather pattern. Um, it's just unfortunate. Uh, it's just one of the things that we have to deal with, one of the challenges uh, regarding this, uh, this fire. Uh, again, more line continue to be put in. It's looking really good. Uh, interior in the uh, the road systems, uh, they're continuing to clear the, the road systems. Highway 236, again, a lot of work, a lot of downed trees. Um, interior roads, same thing. They're going through, uh, getting that cleared. The utility, utilities are getting in and doing their work. The unfortunate thing also is the fact that it, even though they've get, gotten in and cleared a road system, 
we're continually having trees uh, come down. Uh, so once an area has been cleared, they think it's fine. They try to, they come back out to uh, to access out of that road system, and there's trees that have fallen behind them. So it's a constant process. I believe we're going to see a constant process throughout as these trees are fire weakened. We get a little wind, they're going to come down, and it's going to be a constant challenge for us as far as the, the clearing of roads. So just it's kind of a one step forward, two steps back in some cir uh, circumstances with this, and it's just something uh, we're going to have to kind of live with and deal with. Again, big safety concern. Our, our folks, uh, our, our responders out there have been, um, been briefed on it, uh, have uh, contingency plans in place, uh, but it is something that is very hazardous. We're also seeing some injuries, um, not to any of the firefighters, but to some uh, civilians and such that are in that fire area that they shouldn't be. And they've stepped in the hot ash pits and have received burns. So uh, again, another reason that uh, when we evacuate an area, there's a reason to it. It's for the safety of those, those individuals. As we get into the fire, we're gonna see a potential more of that because it's just another hazard uh, after the fire has burned through and been there for a while. Our air program, uh, again, the weather didn't really cooperate. Uh, we had to wait till later in the day to fly our aircraft. Uh, today, we've dropped only about 55,000 gallons of water uh, with our aircraft, so only a, a small window for them to work in, although the window that they were working in, they were as productive as they possibly could be. With the coming weather, the clearing of the marine layer, uh, and it's gonna take a few days to get it where it is gonna be very beneficial to us um, as we get that, uh, that weather change we're going to be flying more of those aircraft, and they're going to be working in conjunction with the uh, troops on the ground to, to get us closer to the uh, finish of this event. Thank you. Speaking next from the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office is Chief Deputy Chris Clark. Well, today was another another good day, and uh, we're, we were happy to get the folks back in their homes for those folks that lived in the Lompico, Zianni area, Mount Hermon, Las Cumbres, and then the area to the east of Bear Creek Road, kind of halfway through Bear Creek, running all the way out to Highway 35. That was, it's great to get those folks back home, and, and honestly, it's a, it's a good day for us. It's a great, great day for them. Um, and uh, I just want to kind of touch on that just a minute because, again, I, I, and I've mentioned this before, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of a day-by-day -day process, right, of getting folks back home and we want to get you home. Uh, there's going to be areas we're going to be able to get you to sooner than others. And so uh, some of the areas that are more affected by fire, it, it's going to be a little while longer. So, um, you know, as we move uh, west and then north in terms of our repopulation plan, uh, that'll be good for those folks. But I just wanted to preface and just say, you know, we uh, please be patient with us. We want to get you back. Uh, we just want to make sure that all those services are, are set for you to be able to return back to a, to a safe place. So again, today, great day for the folks that lived in the Zioni, Lompico area, and we were happy to get you back uh, into your beds tonight. Uh, we didn't have any arrests today. That was another, another, another piece of good news. We did cite one person for being in a closed evacuation area, but uh, we didn't have to arrest anyone, and so that was, uh, that was positive. In terms of our, our numbers, 56 people uh, were patrolling the evacuated area today. We'll have again 56, that same number tonight. With 20 of our folks, 20 in-county uh, mutual aid agencies that are helping us from within the county, and then 16 from over the hill. We responded to four suspicious people and then six welfare checks. And our missing persons uh, count right now stands at one. To we, we just have one case. That case is actually, uh, it, it was someone who reported a loved one who hadn't heard from in a while, but actually the last time they'd seen them was before the fire had started. So kind of what I'm being told is that likely uh, the person is likely not a fire victim, but nonetheless, again, like I've said before, we're gonna we're gonna find this person, and when we do, we're gonna uh, we'll let you know when that happens, and let their family obviously know. Uh, in terms of repopulation, so uh, people are coming back, and so we're making progress with that. Uh, but one hindrance I heard of today was uh, was uh, the route to get back, and so what routes do we take to get back? And so, and again, we want to do this efficiently, so we we can kind of prevent you from from being in traffic or or going the wrong way or on all those things and just really frustrating a process that's already been frustrating. So with that, uh, I just wanna encourage everyone to uh, utilize a couple different resources uh, when planning your route. You know, if you hear that an evacuation order's been lifted and, and you're excited about getting home, uh, I, would, I would ask that uh, and recommend that you take a look at where you're going and then look at, well obviously you know where you're going, but look at uh, the CHP's Facebook page 
as, as well as ours, and you can kind of you can find out where the roadblocks are and where the hard closures are. And then you can kind of predetermine your route because again, there's only certain ways in and out, uh, which makes this area uh, challenging, obviously. But planning your route will will make that transition easier as you as you get back home. Um, also, be vigilant. You know, as we as we as people start coming back, you know, be mindful of who's in your neighborhood. Again, you know, we're we're not going anywhere, and so we're going to continue. As you've seen, our numbers really haven't changed with regards to our policing presence, and we're going to continue that because we want to make sure that you that you feel safe and secure as you settle back back into your home. Um, and so, and again, please be patient, uh, kind of as we go as we continue this repopulation process. Uh, until those areas get, get safer. And really what, what I'm speaking to on that is, is really the, the Boulder Creek area that was heavily affected in the Bonnie Dune area. And so those areas are gonna take a little longer. And it's just because they're, they're, just, they're, they're just more impacted. And so there's a lot more work that still has to be done there. So I just ask for your continued patience. We wanna get you home and wanna get you home as fast as possible. The, the other thing I wanted to mention, and, and I can imagine that if you're, you're displaced from this fire and, and you, you, know, you, you, th you, you say you're home, uh, God forbid is destroyed and so you want to get a head start on that insurance process you want to find out uh, you know um, what what does my home look like you know it says it's destroyed on this the damage assessment map what does that look like and, and we want to be able to help there you know people have asked about photos and stuff like that can I get a photo of my house and so we love to do that except for right now we just have to get people back home and we just have to get uh, we have to secure that area. There'll be there'll be some time. Insurance companies, uh, there there's grace periods for you to be able to file claims, and, and they'll work with you. Um, at some point, that that you know that that may be an option. But right now, I just wanted to let everybody know that that's on our that's on our radar. You know, we we want to do we would love to do that. Uh, but right now, uh, we're just trying to make sure everybody gets home as as efficiently as possible, and then uh, that those areas that, that have been evacuated still under an order are safe so just bear with us on that uh, and then lastly I just want to touch on the recovery uh, resource center and so the county's put together this recovery resource center over at the Kaiser Permanente arena in downtown Santa Cruz at 140 uh, Front Street and it's gonna start tomorrow tomorrow it's gonna open at 11 it's gonna stay open until 7 p.m. and I would encourage you that if you, and they're gonna have all sorts of local state federal resources there. If you've lost documents, if you don't have documents from marriage certificates, the birth certificates, DMV is going to be there. There's going to be disaster uh, um, recovery information and disaster assistance information from FEMA. Uh, there's going to be information with regards to rebuilding, debris removal, utilities, insurance, you name it. Uh, the county's really done uh, a good job of trying to get all these folks into one under one roof. Uh, so that you can have access to them. And I would encourage you that if you, if you need help with that stuff, that you, that you take the county up on that and then you, you, you get on out to the, the Kaiser Permanente Arena where there's people there that'll be able to, uh, to help you. And obviously you can access all of this information at santacruzcounty.us. So if you can't make it, go to, a, go to the county's website that I just mentioned and you'll be able to find uh, further information from there. Thank you. Speaking next from the San Mateo County Sheriff's Office is Lieutenant Vince Badola. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to continue the um, positive news as far as our patrol efforts. Uh, we had about 30 deputies out on patrol uh, protecting our areas that reopened recently, and we're happy to say that um, we had no burglaries, no calls for service. Uh, any suspicious activity so it's a really good news and I want to credit our residents and everybody for just keeping an eye out for each other and those that don't live in the area staying out of the areas which is extremely helpful for us up to the north um, we did receive a few calls and Chief Brenton um, addressed them from Half Moon Bay residents um, with the excessive smoke and we you know we want to reassure you that the Half Moon Bay residents are safe and there are no they're in no fire danger there uh, north of the fires. And then again, I wanna say the same thing over again, is if you don't live in these areas, stay out. You've done a great job of, of keeping the roadways open and allowing us to do what we need to do, but stay out of the areas of La Honda, San Gregorio, and Pescadero areas, please. And then additionally, we've had um, a potential for people to break um, 
barricades or go around barricades in our county parks and our state parks up in the north area, in the north zone there. Please do not go around any barricades. We are out there enforcing the barricades now at the state parks and county parks. Please stay out of those areas. And lastly, um, use our websites, um, use our social media and stay informed with us and know that once information is gonna come out or we get information, we're, it's gonna come out on our website and we're gonna get the information to you as quick as we can. And that's all I have, thank you. Speaking next on behalf of the Unified Incident Commanders is CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 3, IC Billy C. Hey, good evening. Uh, ten days ago when our team was deployed here on this incident, uh, we were looking at an incident that had and was in the process of growing 45,000 acres in a 24-hour period. Reduction in resources of what is the norm. So we made a number one priority is life safety. And we made sure that we were aggressive with our law enforcement partners by getting people out of the way of this incident and this fire front that was coming at them. 10 days later, we've got over 30,000 evacuees repopulated back in their homes. We're gonna continue aggressively mopping this incident up, gaining more perimeter control each and every day and reducing the risk and the hazards for that population out there. The firefighters are working extremely hard. We're gonna be increasing our population on this incident uh, Sunday and Monday with the insertion of 12 National Guard hand crews, which will consist of 288 men and women from the California National Guard, along with supervision from CAL FIRE of 44 personnel. That will be coming in to assist us uh, with the containment efforts that we're putting forth on this incident, as well as be able to maneuver some of our other hand crews to other incidents where the prior needs are in the state of California for the citizens we serve. Thanks. And our final speaker this evening, CAL FIRE San Mateo Santa Cruz Unit, Unit Chief Ian Larkin. Good evening. Um, obviously our reports are good again uh, we're starting to see more progress uh, as uh, the favorable weather and more resources arrive here to help uh, contain this fire um, I just want to remind folks uh, and reiterate what uh, Chief Deputy Clark said um, the Santa Cruz County website santacruzcounty.us um, click on the fire tab there's a tremendous amount of resources for those that have uh, been affected by the fire uh, or had their structures destroyed um, uh, just a great resource and uh, the local assistance center is being set up, as, uh, as he stated, and uh, I, I highly recommend that you uh, uh, either use the website or get to the uh, assistance center um, to help you uh, with the recovery. <clears throat> the county's working diligently right now to get the, the roads open, assess the structures uh, that have been damaged, um, and also the other infrastructure such as bridges, culverts uh, throughout our county road system to make sure that they're safe in the fire inundated areas. <clears throat> For those that were repopulated today and yesterday, I just wanna remind everybody that we're still early in our fire season. And in fact, our burn window that we typically have here in Santa Cruz County is just starting. Um, even though we have an 80,000 acre fire that burned due to drought conditions, um, we are in that prime time for us to be uh, uh, susceptible to another fire. So um, take advantage of this time, look around your home, uh, try to increase your defensible space if you don't have any. Now's the time to start working on that. Uh, just be mindful and uh, uh, use safety precautions when doing that defensible space so you don't uh, create a spark or something that could start uh, a receptive uh, uh, vegetation on fire. So um, just uh, please bear with us. We're going to continue working uh, diligently on this fire uh, so that we can get everybody back home and, uh, and really start that healing process from uh, this devastating fire. Thank you. All right, happy to answer any questions you might have. How many people remain evacuated? I, yeah, the question was how many people remain evacuated? It's approximately uh, over 40,000 people remain evacuated. Uh, can, you, can you talk about any of the infrastructure that might be affected by this fire, people now returning home, what they should be aware of and be careful of? Yeah, sure. So the, there's the, the question was related to what people should be aware of when they return home. 
There's a really great uh, resource online from CAL FIRE that uh, on the Ready, Set, Go website as well, Ready for Wildfire, that actually goes into the details about what to look for when you get home. Hazards such as trees, um, uh, uh, propane tanks that you might have had, items that may be hazardous or might have fallen, what to do when you get to your property as far as what you should touch and what you should engage with and, and not engage with. Um, th that that's a, brings up a really good point, and I think there's a lot of good resources for people out there. Uh, we can go ahead and link that on our incident updates, too, to make sure we get the info out there. Is water drinkable? So that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, that is really going to come down to the water district and, and people checking in with whoever their water purveyor is um, and, and making contact with them. Randy Gordon from KBCZ, Boulder Creek Community Radio. Um, we haven't heard a lot about uh, our, uh, the women and men of our local fire districts, and I'm wondering if you can give us an idea how uh, those uh, crews have been incorporated in the fight and uh, what that integration process has been like. Yes, yeah, so the question is related to local government resources, especially locally here, maybe the uh, San Lorenzo Valley, Boulder Creek area. Uh, having, having been with Chief Larkin since about 30 minutes after this incident started on the late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, uh, I can tell you from the beginning, mutual aid from other agencies was vital to this operation. Um, as the fire progressed, obviously additional resources were called from both San Mateo and Santa Cruz counties. Um, and as we know how limited resources were, making sure that we got as many local resources as possible was vital. Uh, several days into the incident, the uh, Boulder Creek Fire Protection District, along with Ben Lohman and Felton, were incorporated into the Unified Incident Command. Uh, and really what that does is just make sure that all of our efforts are coordinated and unified together and that means that logistical support is coordinated the planning the communication the maps that we're all using uh, and that happened several days into the incident uh, but i will say that was not the beginning of our coordination firefighting together started almost instantaneously after the fire began um, as you can imagine this fire moved fast and it moved into several communities um, you know at 45,000 acres in less than 24 hours so uh, it was a full, a full effort amongst, amongst a bunch of agencies, um, and we definitely, at the appropriate time, uh, made sure that that unified command was established. Uh, there, there, last weekend, in the midst of this still growing fire, there were specific calls from law enforcement and other government agencies telling visitors, please don't come this weekend. Can you talk a little bit about this coming weekend? and? What, they, what people who may want to come into the counties should expect? Sure, the question is related to what people should expect or what the advice is for out-of-county guests coming into the county and what the directive is. Sure, so, you know, as you've heard, uh, tens of thousands of people uh, got are displaced still to this day because of the fire. Not only that, as you've heard, uh, you know the, the structures damaged. You know, 700 structures damaged. You know, 500 something. You know, single family homes. Those folks can't go back to their house, and so they they need to go somewhere. And so, what the county's encouraged, and what we would encourage, is that if, if you don't need to be in Santa Cruz County, please do not come here. And I mentioned that's what, I mentioned that before, because what what you're doing is you're just tying up finite resources for folks to be able to stay hotels, uh, things like that, uh, Airbnbs, it just, it, it ties all those resources up and it provides less opportunity for people that really need it. Um, and so I, it, again, and, and, and to it impacts our roadways it, it, and, uh, and especially uh, for areas like Scotts Valley and other, other areas as we move towards the coast, um, you know, our coastline is beautiful, uh, but for the folks that at some point are gonna get to go back to that area, People traveling Highway One or, or, or trying to go to that 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 the area of the county is only going to create more problems. So while on any other occasion uh, we would love to see people here, uh, now is not the right time. Um, can you uh, elaborate on the uh, uh, with regard to the slop overs? Can you um, pinpoint the locations a little more for us, and uh, was there any structural damage involved? Sure, so the question is related uh, to the specifics about any slop overs that occurred and any potential damage as a result. And Chief Brunton will be on answer that. Yeah, regarding the exact specific locations, um, I can get in general, uh, we had a number of them happening in the north zone, in what's known as Branch One, uh, up in the uh, Butana Park area. We had a couple of those there. Um, 
as well as in the, off the Highway 9 corridor in a variety of locations on that line. Um, in uh, what we have is Division uh, uh, TT and then um, also RR. So this basically a variety of locations along the Highway 9 corridor. Um, they were very small. Uh, we had one yesterday that was about 30 acres. None of those uh, matched in comparison. You're talking maybe an acre or so because we have crews actively patrolling the line, working the line, so they're able to, to pick up on these things uh, quicker when they discover them and take action. As far as any sort of uh, damage to any structures, no damage to any structures or anything like that, just simply um, just over our line and in, in the vegetation and predominantly staying within the duff, not creating any sort of uh, significant fire, uh, but nonetheless uh, burning past our uh, control lines. So crews found those, discovered them, took appropriate immediate action and extinguished those. All right, everyone up here is available for questions one-on-one. -on -one. Just a final note this evening, t the next press conference will be tomorrow evening, 24 hours from now at 6 p.m. Saturday at 6 p.m. we'll be regrouping here for the next update. With that, uh, thank you for joining us. This concludes the 6 p.m. press conference.